What happens to your old phone battery after it dies? Does it disappear? Or does it have a secret second life? Every year, millions of discarded batteries are salvaged, stripped down, and reborn, extracting rare metals like lithium, cobalt, and nickel to build the technology of the future. Inside state-of-the-art recycling plants, a fascinating journey turns toxic waste into treasure. This is how 160 million batteries are recycled each year in a factory. Before a battery can be replaced, it has to be collected, and that's more important than it sounds. Left in landfills, batteries can leak harmful chemicals like lead and lithium, polluting the environment. In Germany and Sweden, strict laws require people to drop off used batteries at supermarkets, electronic stores, and recycling centers. In North America, collection is most voluntary with programs like Call to Recycle setting up drop-off locations, while companies like Tesla and Apple recycle old batteries directly. Once collected, the batteries are transported in specialized trucks to prevent leaks or overheating, ensuring they reach recycling facilities safely where the real transformation begins. Not all batteries are the same, and that's why sorting is such a critical step. Each type, lithium ion, nickel metal hydride, lead acid, and alkaline needs a different recycling process. Mixing them up could cause serious problems, so accuracy is key. In smaller facilities, workers manually inspect batteries, checking labels, size, and shape to determine their composition. But in high-tech recycling plants, machines do the heavy lifting. Spectroscopy and x-ray scanners analyze each battery in seconds, identifying its metal content with pinpoint accuracy. Batteries travel down high-speed conveyor belts, where AI-powered cameras and sensors detect anything out of place. If a battery doesn't match the right category, it's instantly removed. This automation speeds up the process while ensuring precision. Electric vehicle batteries, which are much larger, require special handling. Robotic arms carefully dismantle them, breaking them down into smaller modules before recycling. This is where things get intense. Batteries aren't just metal and plastic, they're packed with stored energy, which makes breaking them down a tricky process. If a charged battery is shredded without the right precautions, it could catch fire, explode, or release toxic fumes. That's why safety comes first. To prevent accidents, high-risk batteries, especially lithium-ion ones, need pre-treatment before shredding. Some are frozen in liquid nitrogen to neutralize any remaining charge. Others are placed in sealed chambers filled with inner gases to eliminate any risk of combustion. Another method involves controlled electrical discharges, where small, precise currents drain out any leftover energy. Once these safety measures are complete, the real breakdown begins. Batteries are fed into massive industrial shredders equipped with razor-sharp steel blades. These machines tear through casings, grinding batteries into tiny pieces. Some shredders spin at over 2,000 revolutions per minute, creating an ear-splitting mix of clanging metal and snapping plastic. In just seconds, a solid battery is reduced to a chaotic mix of metal shavings, plastic bits, and a fine dark powder known as black mass the most valuable part of the recycling process. At this point, the shredded material is a mess of different components. Aluminum, steel, copper, plastic, and black mass all mixed together. Separating these materials is the next big challenge, because improperly sorted elements can contaminate the final product, making it harder to reuse. The process starts with powerful magnets positioned along conveyor belts. These pull out ferromagnetic metals like nickel, iron, and cobalt, which are key ingredients in new battery production. Nickel and cobalt are especially valuable, but leftover steel from battery casings can interfere with the purity of the recovered metals. To fix this, some recycling plants use variable strength magnetic separators, which fine-tune their pole to extract only the desired metals while letting the others pass through. While magnets work well for iron-based metals, non-magnetic materials like aluminum and copper need a different approach. That's where eddy current separators come in. These machines generate electromagnetic fields that repel non-ferrous metals, pushing aluminum and copper into separate collection areas. This ensures that high-purity aluminum can be used in new battery casings, while copper, commonly found in battery wiring, can be repurposed for electrical applications. With the metals removed, what's left are the lighter materials, plastic casings, and paper residues. These are separated using high-speed air jets, which blow away lightweight debris. Some recycling facilities go even further, using fluidized bed separators that combine air and vibration to lift and separate materials with extreme precision. This level of detail ensures that only the purest, most valuable elements move forward. But the real prize in battery recycling is the black mass. This fine, powdery substance is packed with lithium, cobalt, 
manganese, and nickel, the most sought after metals in battery production. Extracting these materials requires specialized chemical processing, where advanced techniques break down black mass into reusable raw elements. Once collected, it's sent off to chemical processing facilities where the final transformation begins. Now comes the real science, the stage where valuable metals are extracted from the black mass and turned into reusable materials. The process needs to be precise, efficient, and environmentally responsible. Recycling plants use two main methods, hydrometallurgy and pyrometallurgy. Many facilities combine both to get the best results. Hydrometallurgy is the more common method because it allows for highly selective metal recovery. This process works by soaking the black mass in giant vats filled with acidic solutions like sulfuric or hydrochloric acid. These bubbling chemical baths dissolve the battery materials, breaking them down into their base elements. To separate them, special chemical reagents are added, binding to specific materials and isolating them one by one. Lithium is the first to be extracted, appearing as lithium carbonate, a fine white powder similar to sugar. It's then purified and sent off to be used in new battery production. Next is cobalt, one of the most valuable metals in the process. It crystallizes into a striking blue material, which can be refined further for use in battery cathodes, aerospace technology, or even medical devices. Nickel comes last, forming a pale green compound known as nickel sulfate, a key ingredient in batteries and stainless steel manufacturing. One of the biggest advantages of hydrometallurgy is its energy efficiency. Compared to high temperature methods, it uses less power, produces fewer carbon emissions, and allows for the recovery of multiple metals at high purity levels. But some materials are too stubborn for acid baths and need a more intense approach. This is where pyrometallurgy comes in. Unlike hydrometallurgy, which dissolves metals in liquid, pyrometallurgy relies on extreme heat to melt and separate battery acids. The shredded black mass is fed into massive electric arc furnaces, where temperatures reach nearly 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. As the materials melt, they naturally separate based on their density. Heavy metals like cobalt and nickel sink to the bottom and are collected in liquid form before being cast into solid ingots. Lighter elements, such as lithium and aluminum, rise to the surface, forming a layer called slag. This slag is then processed separately to extract lithium. To further refine the molten metal, flux agents chemical compounds that attract impurities are added. These impurities float to the top and are skimmed off before the metals cool. Once the metals are fully extracted, they move on to the final stage, cooling and solidification, where they take shape before being sent back into manufacturing. Once purified, the molten metals must be carefully cooled and cast into solid ingots. Large rectangular blocks of raw material can be easily transported and processed. The cooling process is crucial because if the metal solidifies too quickly, it can develop structural cracks, making it unusable for high-performance applications. To avoid this, recycling plants use specialized cooling chambers that regulate temperature changes in a controlled manner. There are multiple cooling methods, each designed to produce high-quality metal ingots. Air cooling is one of the more common methods. Large industrial fans blow cool air over the molten metal, gradually lowering the temperature until it solidifies. This method prevents thermal shock, ensuring that the final product remains its strength and integrity. Water cooling is another widely used technique. Red-hot ingots are carefully submerged in water tanks, creating dramatic bursts of steam as the metal rapidly cools. This process speeds up solidification, but must be carefully managed to prevent internal defects. Some facilities use a combination of both, starting with air cooling before transitioning to a water bath. This hybrid method ensures a uniform cooling process, producing high-strength ingots that can be reintroduced into the supply chain. Once cooled, these shiny ingots, containing purified lithium, cobalt, nickel, and aluminum, are inspected for quality. Any imperfections are identified and corrected before the materials are shipped out for reuse. The recovered metals have countless applications. Lithium extracted from old batteries is used to manufacture new lithium-ion cells, powering everything from smartphones and laptops to electric vehicles and solar storage systems. Nickel is an essential component in wind turbines and stainless steel, while cobalt plays a crucial role in medical devices such as pacemakers. Beyond just resource recovery, battery recycling is helping to reduce dependence on environmentally destructive mining operations. Extracting one ton of lithium through traditional mining methods consumes nearly 500,000 gallons of water, a staggering amount that can be avoided through efficient recycling. As demand for batteries continues to grow, recycling technology is evolving at a rapid pace. 
with breakthroughs in direct recycling, more efficient chemical extraction methods, and increased government support, we are moving toward a world where nothing goes to waste, a future powered by sustainable energy and smarter resource management. And that's how 160 million batteries are recycled each year, turning old, worn-out power sources into brand new materials that drive the future of technology. Which part of this process surprised you the most? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this behind the scenes look, make sure to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more fascinating factory processes.